welcome to the red half of Sheffield preview pod. Uh, I apologize for my laughter. Um, we are here to preview our next Saturday fixture because we have the midweek against Swansea. So guess who's up next after Swansea? It's good old Luton Town. And I'm joined by one of the greatest, best podcasters. I don't know what the hell you want to call them. YouTubers. Ali from the... It used to be We Are Luton Town, but it's not because of he pissed somebody off. So now it's the OK, <laughs> it's the OK Football Show. So uh, welcome in, Ali, from the OK Football Show, not the We Are Luton Town. How are you on this late, late evening in the, in the UK? Yeah, all good, Chad, mate. All good. Uh, yeah, so it was an amicable split. Well, that's the official line anyway. Um, but you know we're off on our own now, and we're doing great. Like uh, we, we do championship content and Luton Town content. We have so much Luton Town content on on our YouTube channel. I encourage everyone to check it out. We're, we don't speak in the nicest terms about Sheffield United though in our championship <laughs> um, prediction videos and our championship weekly roundups either. Um, just personally, before we get into previewing the game. Sheffield United have to be doing better. You can't be relying on a bit of magic from Gustavo Hamer. The embarrassment of riches you have in your team, Kiefer Moore up front, you have Callum O'Hare, um, Gustavo Hamer, the, 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 the bloke with the, the last name that I can't pronounce in defense. You, you have a <laughs> I'm ridiculous, yep. Yeah, you have a ridiculous team. And the only thing holding Sheffield United back right now is it's the Chris manager Wilder? Yeah, it's Chris Wilder. He's holding you back because there, there's nothing in the final third. You know, it's nope. beautifully intricate in the middle of the park. Like Arbalaster is a ridiculous footballer as well. Like he's he's got a massive future. But yeah, I don't know what's up with you guys. You should be putting games to bed. But it's frankly been quite embarrassing. By watching Sheffield United play, like yes, you've been getting the results, but it's like Luton's win against Sheffield Wednesday, where we beat them two one, and you know what? It was the most abject game I've seen from Luton Town that just turned on its head with a red card. That yes, it, you know he handballed it on the line to Sean Barnard, but at the same time, that turned the game really. It really did. Uh, that and substitutes. Um, but Luton haven't been at the races this season at all. And we were discussing it last season. If you remember, we were like, we cannot wait to get back to the championship mm -hmm. where football is proper. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know what's happened at Luton this season. Yeah. Like, well, I, I sort of know what's happened. <clears throat> like the players have lost their desire or the, or the, the tactics were all wrong and you know, that being overcomplicated, it's just, it's been a shambolic season so far. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because <clears throat> I've kept one eye on it, and I agree with everything you said. Um, but that's why I said it in, if you go and look at our preseason picks, I had Sheffield United 15th in the league. Wow, based that's on, low. <clears throat> that, based I, I, I had you guys third or fourth in mine. No, I had a, I had his fifteenth because, and, and that was, I, I'll, I'll say this, when we did the preseason pod, we had we had barely a squad. It was it was two weeks before the season. You know, we brought up. You know, we had a fair few players, but when you let nineteen players go, bring in what, ten or eleven. If you look at our team on paper, as you alluded to, you have Gustav Hamer, you had you have Big Kefa Moore, um, you have Callum O'Hare, you have Harrison Burroughs, you have Rack Saki, Rack Saki, you have um Anel Ahmed Hodzic, you have Harry Suter. We've only shipped three goals, so we're good at the back, but as you alluded to cannot score to save our lives unless Gustav Hamer is going to drag us to a goal and be like, I'm going to win this one nil 
and you guys are going to all follow along. But I've been waiting for the likes of, you know, Ali. You mentioned Ali Ali Blaster. He's out, God knows how long now. He picked up a knock in training, so he's he hasn't been in the squad for. He wasn't in the squad against uh, Pompey at the weekend derby either last weekend. <clears throat> so it's it's one of those where we have a good eleven, but if we have to go and make the subs. If we're, if we're not a goal up in 60 minutes, we're going to either draw the game or, dare I say, lose it. But when you've only conceded three goals in all the games, we're probably odds on for a draw if we don't have a goal through 60 minutes. Because when we, when we start to make subs, and Wilder starts to make subs, and it's just all the kids. It's all the kids. Wow, okay. wow, wow. It's oh, all the we, kids. We shipped three goals. We conceded four goals in our first game, mate. Um, Welcome back to the championship. <laughs> it's, it's, been, <laughs> it's been so trying. It really has. Um, yeah, look, I, I would take grinding out results and scoring absolute sweaty free kicks over what I'm seeing at Luton at the moment, whereby the goals that have been scored against us, you know, the Burnley game, forget about the Burnley game really, but those goals, three of them were just balls straight through the middle that cut us up. And Gustavo Hamer will have a field day against that. But also a lot of the other goals, Will Keane for Preston, Barry Bannon for Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Um, a lot of these goals and all the Plymouth goals that were scored, mm -hmm. they, they've they all come from massive amounts of space just on the edge of the box, in the box. Barry Bannon had the freedom of Kenilworth Road. He could have taken a touch. He could have controlled the ball and then hit it. But you know what? He hit it on the half volley when he, he had no right to pull out that finish that he did. It was tremendous. And, you know, if if you get your passing right around our box, there is going to be space for days to punish Luton. And we got Oxford up next because, uh, you know, this is recorded 29th of September, like before the midweek. And mm -hmm. Oxford's, Burnley couldn't break them down. Burnley drew 0-0 with them. I, I, they had one shot on target. I don't know what is going to happen at home to Oxford's. We're not going to be able to break them down. If Burnley can't, Luton haven't got a chance. Yeah. I'm dreading that game. I just want to see Luton put in a good performance. I cannot take another abject performance. So I'll ask you this. Where has it gone wrong? Is it Rob Edwards? Is it recruiting in the summer? Because, I mean, you because out of the three that came down last year, uh, us three that, that went up came down. I I had, at the beginning of the season, I had you and Burnley in and around the playoffs. I didn't, I didn't think any one of those two teams went up automatically because Leeds were supposed to be God's greatest team, and they're going to – I mean, the league's going to be won by the end of September. They're going to have mm -hmm. 7 million points by the end of September. I don't know how that's possible. But I had Burnley and Luton – as the two teams out of the three teams that we're going to like challenge for this season, what the hell has gone wrong that, that it's, it, it's been a struggle in, in, is it Rob Edwards? Does he need to make a change? Is it not bringing enough players in, in, in the summer transfer window? What is it? Yeah. So it goes back to, uh, do you remember when we beat Brighton four mm nil? -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blew, blew them away. We were two nil up in the third minute. Mm-hmm. So Rob had switched to a 3-4-3 formation and that Brighton game was possibly the worst thing that could have happened to us because we went from a team that played a 3-5-2. We were solid in the middle. We were in every single game. We'd only lost by more than a one goal margin twice. And those were terrible performances to Aston Villa and Brentford. Then that game came along and we blew Brighton away 4-0. And then Rob Edwards was like, ah, 
this is my philosophy. This is going to work. It's never going to fail. And we've been playing that system ever since. Even when we had a massive defensive injury crisis where we had one fit center back, we were playing three at the back. Mm -hmm. And it stopped working. Or, more likely, it got figured out. Because it was fairly obvious how we were going to play. And coming into this season, our window was actually pretty decent. At one point, it looked like it was really bad, and then we made a few signings. Obviously, we missed out on quite a few. We missed out on Rack Saki to, to you guys. There were some players that we should have gone for that we didn't go for. There were some players that were going to come in, like Nathan and Goy, and then medicals were passed, and then Rob Edwards decided, oh, no, we don't need another centre-back. You know what? We've got another defensive injury crisis now. Mm -hmm. um, but we're persisting with this. And I've used this term on this week's match preview where I said... We, Rob Edwards, is continually throwing dog poo at a wall and hoping it will turn into a custard cream mm -hmm. because he's using the same tactics again and again and again, hoping it will click. And the players look disinterested. The players look like they don't understand what's going on. And that is ultimately what has been our downfall. The, the, mm -hmm. the performances have been stale. Um, and you know, the players might have had their heads turned during the, the off season, like Ted and Mengi in particular has looked quite disinterested at times. He was linked, and even Fabrizio Romano said personal terms have been agreed with Torino. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on deadline day, we were playing a game against uh, what was it QPR? We were playing QPR deadline day, and he didn't start the game, and then he came on in the second half. and it was a case of, oh, oh, is he starting? He's starting on the bench. Is he carrying a knock, or is it, is it because he's going? Is he going to come out like uh, you know, eating a pizza and garlic bread like a, a mm -hmm. half time because he's on his way to Torino? Who knows? But a lot of players have had their heads turned by agents. Um, but the window was good. We we brought in some very good players, and um, my pick of the bunch really. Victor Moses, who I think is going to be an unsung hero of the season once we ditch this five, four, uh, three, three, four, three, and actually play a four, three, three or a four, four, two, you know, just something more um, akin to what our squad is built for, really. Yeah. So you're saying that somebody just needs to kick Rob Edwards in the nuts and say, hey, dumbass. We were playing this. We were playing this formation that got us up. You switched it. Now switch it back, and we'll probably be okay. Because I've <clears throat> I've watched some of your games, and I'm like, what in the hell are they doing? And I'm just I'm sitting here scratching my head, and I'm like, this this doesn't make any sense. It's not the Luton. It's not the Luton that got promoted. Essentially, exactly. He's taken what got us promoted, like the way we play, being scrappy, fighting, being a sum of the parts, and you know now it, it's just the form has dropped off the edge of a cliff, and yeah. the, the play style has dropped off the edge of a cliff. And you know what? We're we're the same in the stands. We're like, what what is going on? Why, yeah. why are we not playing faster? Why are we not playing with more intensity? It's yeah. it's very, very concerning. And we've got a horrendous run of form coming up. Like this Plymouth and this Oxford game, they were meant to be the games that we played ourselves into form, like coming off the back of back-to-back -back yeah. wins against Millwall, which was a decent performance in the sense that it was an away performance and we were solid at the back. And then the Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday performance that... We were very lucky, very, mm -hmm. very lucky. And then Plymouth and Oxford were meant to get some form before, you know, oh, my God. The run of form, the run of teams that we got to play now, Sheffield United, Watford. I'm dreading Watford coming to Kenilworth Road. Yeah, they're not as good as they sound. Yeah, but we are as bad as, you know, they're going to have so much space in the middle of the park. And it's a derby. Everything's up in a derby. Mm -hmm. So I am very worried because I remember in 97 when they came to Kenilworth Road and they beat us 4-0 at home. And so my cousin is a Watford fan. And 
he he's been he's been horrendous. And also when we were at Vicarage Road, they beat us 4-0. It's pretty awful. Like, yes, we beat them 2-0, like on our patch, and we got promoted, so we had the last laugh. But for me, success this season is finishing above Watford. Yeah. yeah. That that is all I care about this season. Like having seen the way we started this season. We have to finish above Watford. Yeah. Yeah. So to Saturday. How does it go? Seven, eight, nine, nil Luton. <laughs> We're going to Kenilworth Road. Oh no. Actually, it's at Bramble Lane. So what are yeah. you gonna turn us over? Seven, eight, nine, nil at Bramble Lane? No, 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 no. I don't think honestly, I need to see how we play against Oxford. Hopefully we play up because it's one of the better teams. Um it depends how we set up. If we have fit centre backs that works for the system, maybe after the Oxford game, Rob Edwards will decide to change the system. I honestly don't know. I hope he does because it is um, the, the way we're going at the moment. Well, to be honest, Sheffield United, you, you guys struggle to score. So yep. I don't know. It could be 1 0 with one team nicking it, to be honest. Probably it could it could literally yeah it could be it could be a nil nil draw i would if you offered me a draw now i'd take it every I day would of the too. week yeah I would too i mean and that's that that's bad for me to say in a team that you know should have more fight and should be yeah we're in the playoffs right now but if we don't like i told you pre recording if we don't have a goal before the hour mark if if it's nil nil like it was Saturday against Pompey, it's gonna finish nil nil because we're not gonna be able to score. Because then when you when you put the five subs on or or whatever Wilder's got it up his magic ass, and he pulls out and says, "Do this," and they don't do it, and it's it's just like, okay, do do something. Okay, all right, we're just gonna see this one out, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a draw. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, see I honestly this don't. Way. I don't know what team's going to turn out for Luton. What Luton's going to turn out? It, it's but, it, and I'll I'll tell you this for Sheffield United. It's going to be the same eleven that go against Swansea mm -hmm. because we don't have any depth. So it's going to be the exact same eleven that start against Luton that started against Swansea, barring touching wood, no injuries. It's going to be the exact same eleven. I, we we started from Derby to Pompey. We started the exact same eleven, and we scored one against Derby, nil against Pompey, probably nil against Swansea, maybe one. And it's a here. lot of new signings, though. Like they they will bed in. You like to think they will, but um, but Callum O'Hare is just it's like a light switch. He's either on or off, and then like I said <clears throat> prior. Prior, it's Gus has to just drag us through, mm. figure out what, you know, am I going to have that moment of brilliance where I'm going to score a goal and then we're going to be like, oh, yes, we're great. Or we're going to have the game against Pompey where Michael Cooper was the man of the match. And mm -hmm. yes, he made like three saves. Just a quick word on Callum O'Hare. Did you watch his video of his holiday, which was Possibly no. one. Oh, it's so right. It's one of the most cringe things I think I've ever seen. Like it, he's cringe worthy around. looking at him. It is. It is cringe. But you should watch this, and all all blades should watch this. It was so funny. It's like him on TikTok or something. Um, you know, filming his his holidays. Like, yeah, and I, I I went I went out to the marketplace. It was Peng, and then I ate this thing. It was Boom Ting. Uh, he has this ridiculous accent, which I don't oh, understand. Yeah. Oh, I don't understand. Yeah. I think he's from the Midlands, but it's some weird put on accent that he's, oh, he's put yeah. on. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's worth a watch. It is one of the most cringe worthy uh, things that you'll see on social oh, media. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Good player, though. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> At times, he can be a great player, but uh, I just. For me, he doesn't do it right now. Um, okay, Ollie, before we get out of here, I ask every uh, opponent, and you've been on here numerous times, and I'm going to change it up for you because I noticed something during our recording. 
what is your favorite Office episode? Because mm-hmm. Dwight K. Schrute is right there in yep. front of the Luton Town seat. Okay, that's, that's a really tough one. Really tough one. I've I've watched the series back to back so many times. Hmm. So hmm. pretty much got... anything from season four. You know when there was the writer's strike and they ended up just doing hour-long episodes that they split into mm-hmm. three, three mm-hmm. parts. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, anything from the arc where Ryan Ends up as like uh, an executive, yeah, an executive yeah. at yeah. Dunder Mifflin. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I also it gets a bad rap. I love it. I love the episode, the Saber Store. I love season Sabre, Sabre. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Dunder Mifflin is a part of Sabre. <laughs> um, I, I love that whole season as well. I love the whole show. Like, even after Michael leaves, uh, uh, Robert California, yeah, what Robert a character. Yeah. I, you don't even know who I am. I'm yeah. the Lizard King. Like, he's just a tremendous, unsettling character. Uh, it's one of the best TV shows of all time. It is. Yeah, it is. It's on. Uh, it's on repeat on at least one channel over here in the states. Yeah, on a, a a repeat from from they'll play it from episode one, season one to epi- the last episode of season mm. nine. It's on a it's on a straight repeat, and then then a streaming app you can just watch all of them all the way through. So yeah, I might I might restart actually because it's been po- probably about a year since I last watched it. So yeah, I always I always skip season one though because I've, I've seen the UK Office enough and. It's just a shot for shot remake of the UK office. It's sort of like when the Yanks tried to uh redo the in-betweeners and just absolutely ruined it. Oh really? I've never I've never seen the UK version because it I You've never it seen was... the in-betweeners? No, I, I'm I'm talking as the I'm talking of the the, the office. office version. Oh no, yes. no, no, the UK office is completely different, but the first season of the US office is like shop for shop for the first season of the UK office, but really? the UK office does it better. Really? Okay. I'll, yeah, give I'll it a go. It yeah. yeah, I'll have to check it out because there's a there's an odd meetup between Michael Scott and uh Ricky Gervais. There, there are character. two. Yeah. There are two. He he volunteer he uh attends the video meeting. Oh no, not oh. with Michael Scott actually. He he throws his hat into the ring when they're looking for a new manager. Yeah, with a oh video, yeah, right. a yep. video interview. Yep. Um, it's like, what type of manager am I? Mm-hmm. You you need someone lashing your yeah your your peons or whatever he says, yep. and then he yep. also runs into Michael Scott in the lift. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I need to rewatch it again. What a show! Oh, what, what a, a show! show. Wow. All right, Ollie, we got to <laughs> get the hell out of here. Uh, drop drop where the the people can find you because you are a hell of a watch. You, trust me, guys, you gotta <laughs> you gotta watch him. He's he's a hell of a guy. Yeah, well, for for the blades and non blades alike, just fans of championship football, check us out. We are at OK Football Show on YouTube. We do championship content. We do Luton Town content. You know, obviously, there's more Luton Town content than championship. But there's still like two good championship shows a week. You'll love it. As I said, we're not we're not very complimentary about Sheffield United, but you can argue with us in the comments. We we love that. Just just let me know how you feel in the comments all the time. I'm on Twitter as well. You know, you can find us at, at OK Football Show and also me at actual Ollie K. Well, I don't use Twitter too much anymore because it's a bad place, really. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it is. It is. But yeah, check out our YouTube and uh, thank you, Chad, for having us on. Really appreciate yeah. it, mate. As uh, as always, I, I I love you're you're one of you're you're becoming one of my favorite <laughs> opponent previews, and I hope we play Luton for the next forty years, and uh, I get to do this over and over and over. But uh, yeah, yeah. Before we get out of here, if you haven't done so, follow the podcast at Red Sheffield on Twitter X. Uh, on YouTube, Red Half of Sheffield to see other preview podcasts, Facebook, Instagram, all that. 
you want to follow me, Jarvis underscore 13. And until the next match preview for, for Leeds, I will leave you with Up the Blades.